superconducting electronic elements. So uh, basically, so uh, I will focus on field-induced Josephson junctions. So I will uh, first uh, describe very briefly about macroscopic quantum states and uh, quantum effect. Then I will briefly mention about essence of Josephson effect. <coughs> Essentially, I will focus on tunneling Josephson junction and also weak link Josephson junctions. This is a very broad topic. So I will have to narrow myself, my interest to, uh, to the structure which is made uh, by uh, when we put ferromagnetic strip on the top of superconducting strip. So in such case, in certain regime, we can create a Josephson effect. So I will call such structure field-induced Josephson junction. Then I will move uh, towards uh, generalization of uh, Josephson junctions. Also, I will point uh, the the network of such junctions in, in some, some systems, some physical systems. And then I will move to another very broad topic, to mathematical description of Josephson uh, junctions uh, with focus on field-induced Josephson junctions. And I will also point uh, the numerical methods which I, which I use and also some results which I have obtained. Quite obviously, I will just try to be brief since time is quite limited. Um, so basically, uh, the first uh, known uh, macroscopic quantum effect was discovered by Ones in 1911. So actually, he was uh, looking on, on the physical system via a picture of classical physics. So actually, uh, this was uh, Kelvin, Kelvin, Kelvin concept that electrons at very low temperatures are frozen and uh, that resistance shall go into infinity. Actually, what, uh, what Ones, with his assistant, what, his, what he has found was that uh, for a certain type of materials, as mercury, there is sudden drop of electrical resistance by, by few orders of magnitude, which is due to occurrence of microscopic quantum effect, which is commonly known as superconducting uh, effect. Uh, this effect is al also can be seen by expulsion of uh, magnetic field out of superconducting sample, since there is a Meissner current that shields, uh, uh, that protects a ground state of superconductor. So if we write down the goldberg dijon equations, uh, the uh, internal vector potential that is generated will try to compensate the outside vector potential. So the canonical momentum will tend to be zero. We also see the manifestation of macroscopic quantum effect in, in, in superfluids. So uh, especially we, it was discovered in 30s by Kapitza. And, uh, and then we can see that there's movement of a liquid. Quite spectacular um, example is that if we have a liquid in such state as here, the liquid will go against the gravitation and will creep and will move in a such a way so uh, so after a long time the, the levels will will go to the same, to be equalized. Uh, so this type of phenomena somehow tells that that a kind that in a sense the, the liquid see, uh, does see its neighborhood. So we can associate some other feature that is known from classical physics. So there, are, of course, uh, quite obviously, uh, recently there is also uh, Bose-Einstein condensate and uh, many other examples. But I will just, uh, I just, I just wanted to br uh, to point uh, superconductivity and superfluidity, since the theory of those phenomena was uh, was going quite parallel. So in a sense, for a long time, those phenomena was recognized as as the same phenomena. Later. Uh, people did find the distinction. Um, in the 60s, the Josephson uh, pointed. Uh, Strictly speaking, there is another picture of a Meissner oxide. This is what you have shown. This is just for one class of the superconducting In others, the field penetrates the sun. Well, uh, the, of, co of course. Uh, 
we have uh, superconductors of first type and of the second type. That refers to the one. Well, let's say for for certain type, let's say strength of magnetic field. Uh, at the very beginning, uh, the manifestation is the same. But for for stronger, uh, when we go into stronger regime of magnetic field magnitude, then. Uh, uh, in a second type of superconductors, the magnetic field can penetrate and there will be appearance of vortices. I will mention about this, uh, this issue later. So, uh, so, so Josephson appointed uh, the thought experiment uh, in which he suggested that uh, uh, he asked about the probability of tunneling of, of Cooper pair from one reservoir into another one. So both reservoirs are uh, assumed to be f mm, quantum coherent states. And uh, then Javert uh, tried to prove that he is wrong. But actually, he did confirm his prediction. So, um, so it, it turned out that uh, Josephson effect is the effect when uh, two super, uh, superconducting systems do interact in a perturbative way. So we have a Hamiltonian of left and right, and the tunneling Tunneling Hamiltonian, and uh, so basically, uh, we can write this in such type of representation, and 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 uh, with, with very simplifying uh, assumptions that we assume the wave function on the left side and on the right side to be of of this form, we will find that the electric current that flows between left and right superconductor is proportional to sine of phase difference between left and right. Um, this phenomena uh, can be uh, in very phenomenological way, which is, uh, which is uh, not deeply theoretically true, but is a good approximation. We can use two fluid models. So we can assume there are two channels. So some, some electrons will belong to the, uh, to the so-called so superfluid electrons that uh, this is associated that they with the fact that they create a Cooper pairs. So two electrons pair into one quasi boson that has effective, uh, uh, that uh, has zero angular momentum. And, and then it, it is, uh, it is uh, subjected to different uh, statistics, to both statistics. So, uh, and another set of electrons is not paired. And then, then the statistics of Fermi does apply. So in that sense, we have a, a Cooper pairs going via Josephson junction. So in such case, they don't feel dissipation. There is no dissipation. And then another, another subset of electrons is in a normal state. So it does feel uh, uh, resistance. So there is resistance and capacitance. So this is two fluid model for a Josephson junction. This, this model is quite effective uh, for tunneling Josephson junction. And with much less approximation, it can also be applied to a weak link Josephson junction, which I will mention on next slide. So basically, um, so we can we can have the current coming from superfluid electrons, then for normal electrons, there are two components of current, and uh, and this is a phase difference. Uh, so it's a kind of sine Gordon equation in a sense, uh, and also uh, and here. The, there is a different, so this is so-called weak link Josephson junction. So two reservoirs are interconnected in much stronger way than it, that it was the case of tunneling Josephson junction. So here, this, so this, this uh, in such case, we can no longer use this fully Hamiltonian description. And at least this kind of tunneling term is no longer perturbative. So it will, it, it does appear as, that higher order terms with uh, sign two phase difference and integer uh, multiplicity of it will appear. So in such case, the, such Josephson junction is called also to be non-sinusoidal Josephson junction. So we can also say that it does show a non-sinusoidal current phase relationship, which we usually call in the community of people studying Josephson junction as CPR relation. All right, so this was just a very brief introduction. So uh, quite obviously, we can specify many, many, many types of Josephson junction in many systems, as you can see here. 
In most cases, th th those will be weakly in Josephson junctions. Also, we, in superfluids, we, 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 have, we can have, uh, or in both Einstein condensates, we can have Josephson junctions. So basically, what is uh, prominent as about, uh, as about the difference between tunneling Josephson junction and weak link is uh, this is current voltage characteristic. So this feature is typical for a, uh, for a tunneling Josephson junction, while for a weak link, we can, so in a sense, we, we can say there is certain region of discontinuity, like here. And here, that there is a kind of continuity. So there are two regimes. So this is and a. The axis on the left are the same yes, the current and voltage. Yes, yes. So this is just from oscilloscope. So this is, this is quite early picture. Uh, what does this mean in the middle? So there is a current uh, for zero voltage, in a sense. So that's that's. So he, here we have voltage axis. So here there is a zero. So we can have a flow of current for zero voltage. Yes. 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 Exactly. Exactly. I mean, uh, it shifts, it flows. For example, you can have a you can have a closed superconducting ring which is interrupted in a one place by a tunneling Josephson junction, and and the, the current can flow infinitely long time. Of course, if you if you if you go into more radical, more deeper theoretical description, there the, 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 there will be some contribution to dissipation. So after very very long time, maybe longer than universe lifetime, the current will disappear. Nevertheless, in first order of approximation, you can neglect this dissipa dissipation that takes place. The thing is, the, the problem is that if 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 you Apply voltage which is bigger than superconducting uh, gap, which is usually in the range of milli electron volts, let's say five milli electron volts, uh, you will force uh, the whole superconducting state to go from superconducting state to normal state. So actually, normal state is, is over here. So if you exceed certain current, certain voltage. Also, if, 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 if you, if you there is also critical current. If you exceed, it, then you also will force junction to go out of superconducting state. This is actually a very, very big problem if you want to integrate semiconductor electronics with superconducting electronics, because typically superconducting uh, electronics, I mean semiconductor electronics, works with voltages regime. While we have to reduce this voltage to, uh, or convert this voltage regime to m micro voltage regime, and this is quite uh, quite de uh, technically uh, challenging. If you have some shortcut, this can destroy the whole circuit operation. So in that sense, th there is a, a subfield that uh, that deals with this issue, but I will not mention that today. All right. So so that then then I specified the, the main differences. There is also, from experimental point of view. Uh, if we subject uh, Josephson junction to external microwave field, which is which we place in in its neighborhood, the for example coaxial antenna, then the current voltage characteristic will change. So, if there was no microwave field, we have such such feature as here, and then if there is uh, uh, this microwave field, there there appears Shapiro steps. So this is the, the this is the signature of Josephson junction as well. This is used especially in more complicated situations when we are not so sure whether Josephson junction does occur. All right. So that's that's very briefly the the difference between. So what happens at voltage zero? Why these two lines are different? Uh, what, what's, what explains the gap in the blue and red line at zero voltage? Ah, uh, well, to. To go for for description of this effect, you have to uh, come back to the, this equation, and then you have to place. It's not this uh, uh, well, um, you want you want to you want to explain this this feature. Well, I mean, there is a conventional curve which is black, right? Well, both. And yes, at, at that for some, uh, black and blue, and for some reason, at voltage equal to zero, there is a gap between. 
They coincide. They coincide. For for example, for for zero. I mean, there is there is always a supercutting. There is always a, a, a sign of theta current. This is this line in the middle. So what happens to the? Uh, uh, we have two pictures. Let's forget the middle one. We have a left one which says that if the voltage is zero, there is a current, the white line in the middle. Now we have a right curve on which we have another picture, and I am concerned only with the, the right picture when voltage is equal to zero. I should regain the black picture. I mean, if I read correctly, then there is a gap, or there is some difference. Anyway, there is difference between those two pictures. Which I don't know. There is no potential. The current flows does it like Yeah, yeah, but the current is that is the situation on the black picture in the middle. And I'm asking why it's different from this other one for V equal zero. Okay, you you can obtain this picture, uh, this Shapiro steps if you use AC and get the name. But what happens at V equal at voltage equal to zero? Why these curves are different? Black and pure white, right? Well, at, at, at the point very close to zero, they actually coincide. But in in in, a, in certain distance from zero so voltage. That, that if they coincide at voltage equal to zero, then the blue line should not go down up because it should reach the, the white line. The white line. No, no, because they all have to be like on the black picture. Oh. And on the black picture, they, they, they don't go. I'm sorry. I mean, uh, if, you, if you know well, anything about anything, you have the two pictures which are first the same physical space. Okay. I have a junction and a voltage okay, equal to zero. This speaker, opportunity to explain. All right. So basically, if you if we have external microwave source, there is, ex uh, circuit speaking, no fully zero voltage state because electric field is non-zero. So this electric field, which comes from external antenna, will generate some voltage dependence across Josephson junction. But then zero voltage, there is no microwaves are there. That's the difference. So what yes, is, so there are microwaves. So the answer is that this gap is, is related to the source of the microwave. Yes. 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 That is what? what? That is the measure of what? The microwave source is must have a certain number of parameters, yes. right? like a power or whatever. So the answer would be that this difference is related to the property and to what property of the fiber. Okay, you have you have you have for example Josephson junction, insulator Josephson junction, external microwave antenna, and this antenna will generate certain voltage difference which is time dependent across Josephson junction. Right. That's that's the answer, right? It's zero. It, it, it no, oscillates. So this antenna is characterized by something. Yes. So oh, I'm asking, is this difference between blue intensity? If intensity goes to zero, then you have to connect. Is there also because it does oscillate. In voltage, in yeah, such case, will oscillate. Shall I proceed? Okay. All right. So now I finally I, I I finished the initial the introduction, the general introduction, and I move to more specific subject, which is um, a definition of field induced Josephson junction. So basically, the idea is to place ferromagnetic strip on the top of superconducting strip, and to look for a transport properties between A and B point. Uh, such uh, such scheme is quite convenient since, uh, especially since planar technologies can be used. And as you know, planar technologies are commonly used in semiconductors. So we want so also we want so we want also to use it in superconductors. We, so we have basically four cases when we place ferromagnetic strip on the top of superconductor or ferromagnetic strip separated by insulator on the top of superconducting strip 
or we can also think about placement of multiferroic on the top of superconductor or multiferroic on the top of superconductor separated by insulator. Basically, in this talk, I will concentrate only on those two cases. So uh, yeah, so that's uh, a kind of uh, family of Josephson junctions uh, that can be built with usage of concept uh, which was just presented before. So we can have a Josephson junction, we can have a squid, so we can have a two Josephson junctions that interact uh, by means of magnetic field. And also we can have a, for example, current limiter, so we can place this for a magnetic strip just to impose more sharp transition from superconductor to normal state. But still, in most cases, most time I will just focus on Josephson junction in this uh, configuration. So basically, uh, the intuition is that uh, this, uh, so what is, why ferromagnetic strip shall generate Josephson effect? Basically, it doesn't have to be ferromagnetic strip. It can also be non-superconducting strip. So what does happen? So basically, we will have diffusion of Cooper pairs from a superconductor into ferromagnetic state or normal state, or and diffusion of spin uh, polarized electrons from, from ferromagnet into superconductor. What, what do you mean by diffusion of a Cooper person from the normal state? Well, uh, there are no Cooper person normal state, so they they disintegrate or split apart. If you have interface, for example, uh, superconductor normal state to metals, so one is superconducting, one, one is not. For example, I don't know, PB, copper. Uh, in close proximity to superconductor, there, uh, there, will be, there will be decay of concentration of Cooper pair if you, if you go deeper into non-superconducting material. But still, these correlations will survive if you are close to superconductor. And well, so there must be a certain length. Yes, there is so-called superconducting coherence length yeah. that does uh, describes. After that distance, the Cooper pair disintegrates. Yes, yes, yes. Of course, phenomenologically, you can say since uh, at least if you are in the case of BCS theory, uh, the, 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 the pairing mechanism is quite well known. This is due to electron phonon interaction. So you can say that vibration of crystal lattice is quite, is, uh, I mean, in superconductor and in superconductor, non-superconductor interface is still quite similar. So in a sense, you, you can try to explain by vibrational, <laughs> yes, phonon. But if you move far away, of course, it, it, it does, it, it's different. So, so, so it does no longer support, so it does no longer support the Cooper pair presence. All right. Yes, I mean, uh, but this this scheme which which I I'm I'm uh, describing was also used for uh, uh, non BCS superconductors as D wave superconductors, and th at least from experimental point of view, this scheme did work with this field induced Josephson junction. So, um, um, so actually, in my, my PhD, I I, I use. Uh, uh, Ginsburg Landau for S wave superconductor, and also I use Ginsburg, Ginsburg Landau for D wave superconductor. Uh, this is x square minus y square model. Uh, probably I will not have many time, much time today to, to describe about all details since I have various, top, various things to, to tell. But, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, so. It was confirmed experimentally that such scheme is very universal. So it, it works basically for all types of superconductors. Um, so basically the intuition is that if magnetization is very strong, uh, is that uh, it, it will penetrate the superconductor and it will create a kind of barrier which will mimic the behavior of tunneling Josephson junction. It will mimic because in a real tunneling Josephson junction, there is different chemical potential here and here. So there is certain discontinuity at, at, the, at the interface. And while in our system, the, the material is the same, so there is no discontinuity. Uh, 
this will, it, uh, of course, it will also depend on the thickness of the superconductor, because basically we suppose not to go uh, into smaller dimensions than one coherence length. So I mean, to give you the the number, I don't know. I mean, in aluminium, probably it's 3,000 angstrom, uh, the size of coherence length. So so I if you go below, then the pairing mechanism is no longer. Uh, working effectively, so so the state is no longer superconducting, or at least superconductivity uh, is not so stable. Let's say. Um, so one regime is a so we expect that one regime is like a kind of tunneling regime, and another regime is a sort of weak link regime. So if this, if we if we the superconductor starts to be thicker and thicker this effect of presence of ferromagnetic strip will be less and less visible, in a sense, right? So of, of course, it will be very thick. It will be almost invisible. So in that sense, so, so we, we expect to, so the second regime to be a weak link Josephson junction. And of course, uh, uh, it, uh, this, this system has its electrical representation as in terms of effective circuit. So we can somehow detect. I will, I will, I will move back to this issue later when I will specify some other mechanisms that uh, that are taking place. So basically, uh, in my PhD, I I was not that wise. I started initially from two-dimensional model, but uh, when I was in Japan, I it came to my head that I supposed to go into one-dimensional model at first just to simplify the description of the system. So basically, uh, the simplest way to approach the description of the system is, is that uh, we have a superconducting nanowire. So then there is no place for variation of superconducting order parameters across in first approximation. And then we, we place uh, insulators, so there is no possibility for uh, spin polarized electrons to penetrate into superconductor. So the only magnetic field uh, effects, uh, I mean, modulates the superconducting order parameter in its in in this pro in proximity to the ferromagnetic strip. And also, one very strong constraint which has to be preserved is uh, the, the conservation of electric current. So it, it gives, uh, later I will show, it will give the equations in a quite straightforward way. So, so, so we, we have, you can have such type of system. Uh, also, we can, we can approach, uh, we, if, if uh, so basically this length can be long. And uh, we, can, we can also saturate or lower the superconductivity if we place normal strip uh, from another side. Uh, so in a sense, we will have S, S1, S2, S1 superconductor, which is in addition modulated by external magnetic field. So in a, effectively, this system can be approximated by in a such a way. So we have a loop of electric current, and we have such, uh, such uh, superconductors. Or we, we can have a the loop of, su of uh, electric current, and we can have a superconductor. All right, so this is simplified Josephson. Uh, well, right now, if I, if, uh, uh, actually, uh, it will later, it will appear in my equations that my locally, the superconducting order parameter can go into zero. So it will correspond to core of vortex that is being induced. So in principle, we can have a network. Does any phase slippage can be understood in terms of the vortex? Yeah, actually, it's a very good uh, point. Uh, what? The phase slip, which yeah, uh, also much of the, of the phase of the <coughs> condensed wave function in this model can be visualized as a vortex. I mean, also phase slips might appear if you have nanowires. Thermodynamically, they, uh, there are some fluctuations of temperature and other factors. So the, the, the phase slips uh, can occur. And actually, electrically, if you look on the description 
of this, if you measure the phase slip, it's a little bit like Josephson junction, which is moving in a sense. It's like a normal state propagating uh, inside inside superconductor. This is. Yeah, it's, it has a kind of soliton behavior, but I don't have much time to go into de details of it. Nevertheless, yeah, we can describe it. All right, so I will, I will move. Then I started to think what I can to do more to, in, to generalize the system, which I was considering. So actually, I can place this nanowire in various uh, sources of magnetic field or vector potential that does modulate my superconducting order parameter. So first stage of generalization is just one plane. Then we can, if we s simplify the presence of ferromagnetic strip in such case by a loop, closed loop of current, just I will move for a moment. So we can have currents in two directions, in the perpendicular to the plane of the picture and along on the co contour of this, on the plane of this picture. So we can have, a, we have, we have a loop of polarizing current, which is black one of such shape, any shape. And also, so this has this is closed loop of polarizing current. And we can have a loop with some infinite, I mean, the, the, this goes from plus to minus infinity. So we can have two, family, families of, uh, two families of loops. And then we can have superconductors. So uh, quite obviously, uh, it, it, it might generate, that's why I call it robust field-induced Josephson junction or robust field-induced Josephson junctions. We need to solve equations to determine how many Josephson junctions were induced. Of, of course, it will be uh, judged just by if, if order, superconducting order parameter magnitude will go to zero, then we will, this is information for us that there is a kind of Josephson junction or or a vortex which is present in the system. Then we can have actually uh, superconducting cables, so two violets and also the polarizing cables. And in general, we can have a, a the family of superconducting cables with asymptotic state with plus <coughs> asymptotic states in plus minus infinity. And also we can have a family of closed closed superconducting cables. Uh, I was even thinking about going more since quite recently uh, that there is a new type of fashion this, this is called hybrid quantum systems. Some people try to study the interaction for example of both Einstein condensate with a closed loop of closed for example loop of su superconductor. So in principle we can embed also the Bose-Einstein condensate, but I, I will not, I just, I just briefly mention about such possibility. Okay, now I just want to move into more concrete equations. There is also the way of its implementation in physical system, but probably I will, I, I will skip it. So basically the idea was, uh, initially I, I was thinking that we can have a, a network of superconducting cables, and we can have a network of polarizing cables. And then we can use the concept of transistor in each node of polarizing cable to control the flow, the direction of current flow in polarizing cable. However, if you want to do it experimentally, it will turn out that there will be big dissipation because this is a normal state, which will affect superconducting state in its neighborhood. So actually, this will not work. So you need to use you need to use uh, superconducting. All cables must be superconducting, and you need to use one superconducting cable with higher critical current to cut locally the other superconducting cable that is current polarizer. I will not uh, I will not uh, go into details. Uh, I will just briefly mention about one of the paper which I am preparing, which is available at archive. All right, so let us move back to this field-induced Josephson junctions that uh, I was describing at the very beginning. So basically, it's quite obvious that if you are far away from ferromagnetic strip, if you send the electric current via superconductor, there will be some asymptotic states. 
Uh, and uh, this asymptotic state will not feel the presence of this ferromagnetic strip until certain distance. However, if you move sufficiently uh, close to uh, to uh, ferromagnetic state, then uh, in its neighborhood there must be a screening currents. So those because basically uh, the this, the screening currents that comes from Meissner effect. So basically, the, so the, there is certain magnetic field which comes out of for magnetic strip that punch the superconductor, and uh, especially this fringe field is quite effective. It's quite strong. I will, so it, it can punch locally the superconductor in two places. So it might generate two just a kind of two Josephson junctions in the system. But it, it's always being accompanied with a screening currents. So this situation is quite easy to be solved if, if you are in a London limit. If you are in London limits, you basically take Ginsburg Landau equation. You assume that superconducting order parameter is constant. So you are considering very, very weak magnetic fields. And then you simply uh, assume that the current is proportional to vector potential direction. And then you, 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 can, you can get quite easily this uh, screening currents. And actually, actually uh, it, it will turn out that in this London regime, you can add the, the wave packet coming from in minus infinity to plus infinity with the screening currents. But this can only be done in the London regime. In more general case, the, uh, this, uh, I mean, London regime is very convenient to work with uh, because basically the superposition of two vector potentials is the solution, is still the solution of the equation. But this is only for a weak fields. So if fields become stronger, this is no longer true and the situation becomes much more complicated. I just wanted to mention this is almost half analytic result, I will, uh, which I'm going to publish quite soon. OK, this is just briefly sketched. This, uh, this idea is briefly sketched. All right, so basically what I, was, uh, what I meant was that the electric current density is proportional to vector potential and superconducting order parameter. But what does happen in this London limit is this is simply constant position independent. That's why basically the vector potential determines the current that flows via the system. And also, uh, you can use the properties, the translational properties, uh, especially if you consider the, the asymptotic states to obtain the solutions. Uh, it's, uh, you will see that there's a skin effect, which basically means that the deeper you go into superconductor, you have exponential decay of vector potential and magnetic field. All right, I will not mention this is quite easy calculus. Uh, and I, I will just move to more general systems. So you can extend this reasoning for various system with various layers and this wheel has uh, this wheel has its meaning for for the case which I'm studying for uh, designing of a RAM cell a random access memory cell for rapid single quantum flux <coughs> computer basically one feature that needs to be mentioned is that uh, basically such presence of ferromagnetic strip might be uh, approximated by a closed loop of electric current. And it's quite obvious that this current is going in this direction. So we have a screening current that will flow in that direction just to shield the presence of, of uh, the built-in current in ferromagnetic strip. So there will be certain uh, phase difference which occurs in a ground state. So if you build a metal lattice with such structures, you can basically design, uh, design this phase difference. And this phase difference will go ex explicitly into this uh, sign relation, current phase sign relation. So this is a nice feature which I just come across that we can have a, a so-called alpha Josephson junction. In principle, the Junctions, which I was describing at the very beginning, was zero Josephson junction, so-called. So there, if there is no phase difference, there is no electric current. But here we can have electric current because this electric current is shielding the 
is shielding the presence of external current, which is built into the system. All right. Uh, and then uh, uh, we can move towards uh, a description of, uh, of one dimensional case. So we have very strong current conservation principle, which basically says that car, if we go along the cable, the current has to be constant. Basically, we neglect phase difference, uh, change of uh, magnitude of superconducting all the parameters across the cable. So basically, we have that this is constant. So this is one constraint on vector potential. And second thing is just standard ginzburg landau equation. And it does lead to such type of equation, which can be quite easily solved, where, where f is a modulus of superconducting order parameter. It's, it's, and then, yeah, this is just simply one dimensional problem. In that case, we can also tune the, alpha, the effective alpha coefficient in a such a way where f1 and f2 are such functions. This also can be found in this paper, which I mentioned on, at archive. It's quite simple. It's very simple calculus, so I will not uh, go into details. All right. Now I want to move. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, because the uh, oh, the next person. Right. Uh, because the, the current, uh, I mean the magnetic potential is uh, the direction of the current direction, right? Uh, yes. The magnetic potential is proportional. So vector potential. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So the current is not that should be in our direction. I mean away from. Well, actually, if you go into ginzburg landau equations, the equation for electric current is the same as in Schrodinger equation. It has the same form. And if you, if you make proper choice of gauge, of, then basically you will come into such relation quite, quite, in a quite straightforward way. You can, you can go into such, such a way. I mean, it, it, this takes a little, little time to think, but but it's not really difficult. I mean, so this the, the derivative which is present at the beginning is small. The derivative um, which is present mm -hmm. if you write the exact formula. So uh, we assume that it's more or less homogeneous, and then derivative. Somehow. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. Well, that's 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 quite simple exercise that can be done. I mean. All right, so I will just proceed because I have a quite short time, I guess. So, 10 minutes. All right. Okay, very briefly. Obviously, so far we were just in this regime. So, there is a class of models that describes the, tra the quantum transport properties. Uh, transport properties, uh, and uh, I basically will deal with two. Fl I already described those two. Then I will go back a little bit more into Bogu of Dijen, and then I will end. Uh, okay, so uh, when, I, when I was given a problem initially, I, I didn't know which method I should choose. So actually, I come to Professor Jarmaga from Gelonia University. It was correct. I didn't have the correct. Yeah, yeah, they are different. Yeah, yeah. Eliasberg describes phonons in the systems and. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the thing is that if you go into BCS description, you get propagators which are very complicated, and those propagators becomes more simple if you describe a dirty superconductor. So, superconductor that has some particles that are non-magnetic, and then, then at first, in 6069. It was the, the derived by Eilenberger, this, uh, this transport properties, and they were further simplified by Usadel. And they are quite well known in the community of physicists dealing with Josephson effect. Eliasberger is something else, which is also very important. It, it gives enrichment to BCS picture, but I will not mention it. It's, it's different. I mean, Eliasberger and Eilenberger are different. All right. so. So then, uh, 
So Professor Jarmaga mentioned to me that he's using uh, relaxation method for superfluid systems. And since Gross-Pitaevsky formalism is quite simple, is quite similar to, not the same, to uh, Ginsburg-Landau picture, then, uh, well, the same type of method can be used. So what is the main assumption? The main assumption is that if we derive equations of motion, we have a physical field, xi, and functional derivatives has to be set to 0. But in my numerical methods, I make intuitive guess about field configuration, physical field configuration, and then I work in virtual time, in a sense, in iteration time. So I assume that this field does evolve according to such scheme. So we have some constant, and we have something f f uh, finite delta t, and we simply apply the small change of uh, physical field to the lattice. To the lattice. And then we monitor how functional behaves. If it does minimize, and if uh, numerical error minimizes, we approach the numerical solution, which is, well, that, that, that's the criteria. So basically, so basically, for example, if you consider the superconductor with some such alpha coefficient, so the here is more superconducting state, and the here is a kind of normal state. And if you make initial guess, which is even non-intuitive in one dimensional, after many iterations, you get such superconducting order parameter, which is proper, because here you have a normal state at, on this side, and here you have more superconducting state. If you monitor free energy functional with, with virtual time, in a sense, they, you have minimization. And then you have, if you monitor average error, well, it also goes to minimum after certain iterations. Okay, this, this method is not the best, especially in one-dimensional problems, because there's a lot of excellent tools in one dimension to work with. But this method is relatively good or very good. For example, if you have, I was working with up to six fields. So you have uh, nonlinear partial differential equations, a set of like six different fields, like my, I will just show you in, in a minute. Like vector potential magnetization, superconducting order parameter, and this method gives you proper topology of solutions. Uh, but obviously, in uh, if you have many components, that there is a lot of things that are about initial gas and things like that. Nevertheless, you can get initial solutions, and you can tune these solutions further, like to use a different method, like an unique method. I mean, uh, you need to technically to define which error satisfies you, or what's your criteria? I mean, well, all right. So basically, I, I, I was generalizing this method for different formalism as well. And uh, of course, everybody knows ginsburg landa so I will not mention it. And then I, I will move to the description of the system. So the, thing, the idea is that we have a, OK, so we have this, uh, and for example, normal superconductor state. So there are certain boundary conditions, which is uh, characterized by this B coefficient. And if you have superconductor vacuum state, then there is no electron, uh, there's no current flowing from superconductor into vacuum, that's the assumption. So uh, we have two types of boundary condition. So this basically, for a uniform interface, this is constant, but you can make variation of the interface, especially in different technological processes. So basically, you can assume it is position dependent. All right, so this was the tool. And for example, I take superconducting strip and normal strip. And for certain thickness, I have separation of reservoir into two maxima. While if the, if the superconductor is thicker, this, there is no separation. So in a sense, I can say that in such system, the, kind of Josephson effect was induced by the presence of non-superconducting strip, while here it was not induced. Uh, we can go farther. We've, we can play with this concept. We've, we can go into cylindrical or spherical coordinates. So you can have from magnetic strip or normal strip, you can have superconductor. So basically, the same using the same concept, 
you can create Josephson junction between a, this point and this point, or you can create two Josephson junction in series. So I was playing with this concept. I, I was I was obtaining certain solutions of superconducting or a parameter versus angle. If you go around, um, yeah. And then when I was when I then I moved to the case of real ferromagnet. So if I have have real ferromagnet, I have the following uh, uh, ginzburg uh functional, which comes from superconductor, from ferromagnet, and from from interaction be between superconductor and ferromagnet. So basically, so basically the knowledge we have the knowledge of two FMFS functional. That's almost textbook knowledge. But as about this interaction, I, I was postulating such type of dependence. And later I found certain reference to Kuboki work. So he was deriving uh, the effective, the extended uh, ginzburg landau model from Hubbard, uh, from Hubbard, extended Hubbard model. So, uh, and then from micro. Is this happening? Yes. And what, how should I read this expression gradient m squared? There are lots of different terms which come up. Yes, unfortunately, yes. I mean, so is, is it divergence or it's Well, I'm asking. Same is upward. Uh, there's always a problem. The, the, the gradient upstairs is missing the arrow. It's also the problem. Uh, here, yeah, there is, yeah, there's supposed to be arrow. I'm sorry for that. Yeah, yeah. Because you might, you might have to evaluate the functional derivative with respect to that. I have to take some derivatives, right? Actually, you can go into more complicated picture, but the. No, no, I, I don't want to go to more complicated. I just want to know what is this thing. Um, Okay, never mind. Somehow you know how to tell um, So I was using this uh, because this paper is very technical. There's are uh, one page formulas, very complicated. Oh, so, sorry for asking. Yeah, no problem, no problem. I mean, also obtained the solutions for, for, for a magnetic case. So in certain regime, the magnetic field was cutting the superconducting order parameter into certain depth. So you can say this is a kind of weakling Josephson junction in this regime. And the another regime is, is like a tunneling, quasi tunneling Josephson junction. Yeah, so and then I, how much time I have? Because we have delay like five or 10 minutes. So that's why I'm asking. All right, so I just move to, um, just to very end. Uh, okay, so. Just one, two minutes about what I did in Japan about this RAM cell I just mentioned. So basically, the idea was to find the system that will change current voltage characteristic with minimum energy. In that case, the tunneling Josephson junction was, was taken. So it was superconductor, insulator, ferromagnet superconductor. So this was a tunneling Josephson junction, which was subjected to external magnetic field, which was coming from this ferromagnetic strip. So this was structure one, which I was investigated. And also, I was investigating this, this structure two, which was also tunneling Josephson junction, so superconductor insulated superconductor. And we have two ferromagnets. This has pinned magnetization, so fixed magnetization. And this magnetization can be changed. So the idea was to design the system and to investigate the transport properties. So we have to place external electrodes to control the state of this strip and this strip. Yeah, and I was developing this model. I was uh, looking for a fringe fields coming from ferromagnetic strips. So we can recognize fringe fields coming from those two strips in, a, in a such a way. It's basically strips are here. Or you can have two ferromagnetic strips in parallel, and there are different magnet. Or you can play with the first configuration, but in AC. Anyway, uh, 
I was investigating such type of systems and uh, the behavior in such type of systems. And so this is one of uh, projects which is very nice because we have to turn on the electrode. At the same time, we have to minimize the cell size. We have to, uh, we have to look for coupling between neighboring cells. So uh, this is all project that has also is both technical and also which touch, uh, which uh, is interconnected with non-equilibrium uh, transport properties. So um, yeah, so that's that's one of my research directions in the near future. Okay, uh, I have quite many things to let's say uh, to be done because this family of the systems can be done in, in a systematic way. It needs to be studied. Also, I also want to investigate so-called topological Meissner effect. So the idea is that the idea is that very simple observation from my PhD. So if you have very thin superconductor and on the top we place two ferromagnetic strips, if they strongly interact, the magnetic field will not be able to punch to the interior of this squid because this will imply that the magnetization of two strips has to be opposite. So my claim is that my claim that is that uh, that uh, for certain strength of magnetic field there is extra type of Meissner effect which is due to topology of the of the structure that's why I call it topological Meissner effect. Uh, I, I briefly mentioned in, in one of the, my publication, but I, I still look for uh, results. And just very, very last thing, which uh, which I found in Nature paper, which is a little bit related to my work, is that there is certain in this type of so basically we, ha we can have three states of magnetic strip, and this state is pro is pro promoting the Josephson effect, uh, Josephson vortices in the system, while this state is promoting the Abrikosov vortices. So we can have a continuous switching between Abrikosov and Josephson vortices. Actually, I discovered when I was preparing this presentation on Monday, so there is this Nature paper in October. It was published on 18 October. It was dealing with such strips. So, uh, so this is because Basically, if we have a ferromagnet and superconductor, it depends on the magnetization, we can have built-in vortices that are attached to ferromagnets. So I just want to underline that physics of this structure is rich, so it's further, further research is necessary. And so I'm looking for a possibility to continue my research. That's one of motivation to keep this up. Thank you. No, no, it's not too far away. Actually, um, there was some experiments um, done. Right now, okay, those guys from Nature are quite big competitors. They are, in a sense, on the tail because they they have both theory and experiments. They don't have that good theory, but they have very good experimental results. Uh, anyway, there, there is. I'm looking for. Yes, so there is. Gomez and Meda work on experimental studies to realize Josephson junction and QBC in cup, cuprate and FE based superconductors. So this is one experimental work. There was another experimental work which was done by Clinton, but he never built the theory for the structures. Uh, there is also Professor Eschrick, uh, but he was going into quasi one dimensional description with such system. So in a sense, Probably I'm still quite much alone, the person with the theory, but obviously I have to speed up to produce more results to be, in a sense, recognized. So, yeah, that's what I can say. I, I, I do have a question. Yeah. Uh, the one thing I was missing is these are the conventional low temperature superconductors. Not, not necessarily, not necessarily. It can be also D wave. How can you describe anything? 
Okay. Um. I mean, your, your basic mathematics is whatever you do is 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 programmable. And uh, how uh, do we know that we are permitted to use the Gibbs programmable to describe anything for high TC superconductors? And if ever we will have electronics built on superconductivity, that surely would be electronics built from the high TC superconductors, okay. not from the low term, unless we will leave that Antarctic. Okay, I think I can basically answer your questions, I believe. All right, so uh, first of all, the Ginsburg Landau theory was invented in the 50s, 10 years before BCS, and it's still, it was done on, yeah, but I mean, uh, it was applied to superconducting case in the 50s, and still is, is used up to, up to now to describe effective transport properties. So there was... The old fashioned superconductor. We don't know what is the wave function. I mean, the, the, the concept of the order parameter, whether, whether the scalar order parameter is has anything to do with the superconductivity of a higher order. Higher order uh, I'm, I'm sorry, of a high temperature. In, for example, in D wave superconductors, you have two superconducting order parameters, CS, PCD. There is Alvarez paper, I can give you some reference. Uh, with, with the D superconductors, then the late Professor Kalashnikov showed it years ago, and, this kind of, and we know that this is a special case why there are two millions of Landau equations, actually, for the D wave, right? Yeah, there is, there is, ex there is derivation of ginzburg landau equation from extended Hubbard model that uses also that is also supported by some phenomenological arguments uh, with about certain symmetries and so on. Well, we don't know the origin of superconductivity in D-wave superconductors yet. There are like Professor Spavek working on the theory of it, but uh, but we, we certainly there certain order parameter was identified to occur and. Uh, Extended Ginzburg uh, GL XY X square minus Y square model is used, for example, and it's quite effective. Well, I think we will continue this discussion. No, no, I mean, the question is, I mean, but, I mean, to make a point, what is the this refers to the low temperature superconductors, which you have to discuss. All right, so, so basically, uh, the answer is that usage of this Brooklander model for high temperature superconductors uh, is a good description of some transport properties, but it's not fully a uh, fundamental description of, su of superconductor properties origin. Particularly if you are discussing the coupling with the magnetization. Well, uh, well, I can propose the models, no, and models can be verified. Uh, I'm not so an expert, I just want to learn. Thank you very much.